Simon, it's been uh, an interesting event here today. Tell us about these machines that we have here and the company that operate them. So the machines we have here today are an AM400 and an AM250. The 400 machine is the higher powered laser, especially suited to doing aluminium materials, whereas the 250 machine has a 200 watt laser, and that's better for materials like stainless steel, ink, and L and titanium. So these additive manufacturing machines, your company is a separate company to SPE. But how, how long ago was it set up and, and what's the future, certainly with this type of technology? So I was introduced to, to Gary and Phil from SPE 18 months ago after actually trawling almost the UK to try and find somebody who was interested and passionate about being part of this new technology, this additive manufacturing. So I'd say 18 months ago, we, we, we decided to move forward. It's taken up until the start of this year to really go for it. The machines have been in place now three months. So we've actively been up and running for three months now. You must have made some investment here um, without potentially contracts to, to occupy the machines. Is that right? That's exactly right. Now, we, we, we've had help from Rennie Shaw. So as we've been getting business in, Rennie Shaw, I have to say, and not a service bureau, but while, we, while we've placed the order for machines, the machines have been delivered, we've got lots of interest. So they have backed me up. Why are Renishaw the machines of choice? Well, Renishaw and myself go back a long way. These actual machines were originally what was called MTT machines, and I was one of the team who designed and developed and patented this technology. So it was natural for me to choose Renishaw, and also the only UK manufacturer of an additive metals machine. So if someone knows how to get the best out of this type of technology in these machines, it would be you then, wouldn't it? It most certainly would, yes. And, and, and how are you going to do that? Because we talk a lot at MTD about 3D printing, additive manufacturing, and, and we, we look at it month on month. Is it growing in the, you know, is it becoming more popular? I'm interested to know your opinion on that and where the future lies and how short term um, you know, what we can expect in the short term from this type of technology. So where, where, where additive manufacturing has been in the past, it's been more like the, the research institutes, the technology institutes, the likes of TWI. Where we need to see it going, and it is going, is into mainstream production. And that's why working with a company like Staff Precision Engineers, or SPE, they understand the requirements for production. So where is it going into mainstream production then? What's our, what, what kind of companies, what sort of parts? So it's a very good question. So automotive, aerospace, motorsport, they are the three key areas. Medical is certainly an area of interest for, for additive manufacturing, and it's already in there, but that's not for SPE at the moment due to the regulations that are required. So in the industries you, that you mentioned then, what, what, why is it advantageous to manufacture on this type of technology as opposed to previous forms? Okay, so if you're doing short run, let's say you're doing a short run casting, you'll need the tooling to produce that casting and investment casting, for example. If you're doing a short run prototype aluminium part on this technology, there's no tooling required. There's some basics. Moving on from there, we talk about, let's take aerospace, we talk about fly to buy weight ratio. There's light weighting technologies that you could only manufacture the parts using this technology. Isn't it gonna take longer to do it though? It will take longer in the long run, for short run, because there's no tooling. It's, it's, it's on the machine, off the machine. And, and cost, I mean, that's a massive uh, factor. Is it cost efficient to be making parts like you're suggesting from those industries on these machines? It is, yes, especially when you're looking at a part that you couldn't manufacture any other way. You can recycle the material on site, you can optimize the design, very good with lightweight structures, toolless technology, no tooling required, no setup costs. But what about the cost of the powders? Okay, very good point. The powder is developed from a billet. So you start with a billet of aluminium, you put on a machining center, a machine, the metal away. You start with that billet and then atomize that billet of material to give you the powder. So obviously there's a process there which adds cost in to the powder. So aluminum, so for example, two, three, four times the cost of powder. But of course, the great thing is, you owe, additive manufacturing is 95% efficient on the powder usage or material usage, whereas subtractive if we can call it that you're actually 10 percent efficient because you're throwing 80 90 percent of the material away and by the way that materials then uh, it is contaminated waste it's not something you can recycle on site and then what about the, the finished part as well the, the properties the makeup the strength because printing is different to other forms isn't it? it it is so on metals you're looking at the raw values 
So for aluminium, for stainless steel, unlike the plastics, it's not an injection. You know, they, they don't have the mechanical properties. So, so the mechanical properties are right in, in where we need them, really. And then there's always the post-processing of, of hipping, for example. So, OK, I, I take all those points, and we've seen some of the parts that these machines can make, which we'll, we'll put on to the footage so people that can, can see. What's your expectation for the business over the period of the next call it two years well you know it's a, it's a good question and while we take our leaders from the Wohlers report in America Terry Wohlers has plotted the business and at the moment it's exponential where we can see it going so we talk about this industry being worth 20 billion by 2020 at the moment you're talking around about the five six billion mark okay, and when when you're if another company or somebody was looking to get into additive manufacturing mm. Renishaw is a pretty good place to start isn't it because you're going to need the support um, the infrastructure of a business that really knows a lot about this new new technology. No, that's exactly right, yes. You know, to go out and buy a, an AM machine, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble because there's more to it than just having a machine in a room. You need to have that support, you need to have the, the education on board, you need to understand what it is. It's, you know, additive manufacturing isn't the, the cure for all ills of manufacturing, but put it together with traditional manufacturing, and then you have a, a, an opportunity to do, to do really well. And you must never do additive manufacturing for the sake of it. If you can machine a part, you machine a part. It's only when you hit that sweet spot of a, a uh, the application is lined up for the technology. It's a different way of thinking. Now you're not thinking about when you're designing a product, you can now think differently because you can actually manufacture it in a completely different way. That's a big a big factor as well, isn't it? It, cer it certainly is. You know, you talk about this topological optimization. We talk about g making a, a bone type material. We can talk about weight reduction. It's, 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 it's making something that you couldn't make any other way. And once you've got that, as I said before, you've hit the sweet spot. And I'm not quite sure what the answer is going to be to this, but when we look at machine tool technologies these days, people are looking at producing equipment that is far more economical. Mm. Um, is that the case? Are these, are these low cost to run? So to run the machines, the low cost, to buy the machines, the high cost. If that answers your question, I don't know. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.